Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Wa Salati Wa Salam Ashraf Al Mursaleen, Sayyidina Wa Mawlana Muhammad Al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bimadadakum wa nadadakum Sayyidina Rasul Kareem, Ya Habib Al Azim. Fatihullah Ti Rasul wa Ulul Amri Minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdul al ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalim, and jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah, we talked about last night <coughs> to find solace and peace in our solitude, that to be content. To be by ourself and with ourself. And when guidance comes and, and hikmah and ilma laduni, it's not just to tell people, don't follow your ego. Like a kindergarten can do that. But to give the science of the ego, the nafs, on how the nafs is. is operating how shaitan is partnering with the nafs and that the two of them are taking you down, taking us down. So their knowledge and the uloom that when we take it, write it, understand it and begin to apply it. This is a sign then we are not continuously trying to fail. Otherwise our life will be a series of unfortunate events and continuous failure in the way of realization. And he said, I don't know why it's happening, most likely you don't take notes and you're not studying the notes. That this is a immense science of the heavens, that when they are allotting the time to teach about something it must have an immensity for myself, my realization and anything else Allah has in store for me. Whether I'll be using it at work, I'll be using it to teach people, Allah knows what He has in store for each of us and how this knowledge will benefit ourselves and save ourselves and enlighten the soul. So then this ocean of solitude to be content with myself, by myself so that I can do my practices, I can do my awrad, I can do my contemplations. And once they've elevated themselves and brought down the bad character and bad desire, it becomes a very tranquil peace. قُلْ يَا نَهْرُكُنْ إِبَادًا وَالسَّلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ that the reality of our life is a fire and everything around us is an immense fire. And anyone who is thrown into solitude, the majority are burning because of the fire of their character and their deeds. So remind me about so we get back to that. So they're thrown into a fire, this is a notion of solitude. When Allah want to cast the servant into the fire, He puts him and her by themselves, gives them time by themselves. Whether it's driving on a bus, time that you're, you're actually everybody's going to work, you're at work, whatever it is. Some people don't have any work. Whatever the situation is that Allah opens the moment of solitude. That's the example of قُلْ يَنَّهْرُكُ نِبَارْدًا وَسَلَامًا that say to this fire, be cool and peaceful. Why? Because the fire of solitude is very dangerous. And those whom are trained, that solitude became very peaceful for them because the conditioning that they have and Allah has dressed them from their training, their madad and support of their shaykhs and the love and support of Sayyidina Muhammad the whole way has opened for them that in their solitude it's in a long time where their consciousness can begin to teach them, inspire them, 
give them the rhyme and reason of the life that they live, the events that have transpired, its wisdoms, its realities. And the whole purpose of tafakkur and contemplation is to slow down, stop and smell the roses. That this life of ours we're using it and moving too fast and we lose all the signs, we lose all its benefits and we're just busy in a hustle and running. And the solitude at its best the servant is able to open the emanations within their heart, the understanding, they pray alone, they recite alone, they, they all the things that Allah want to open to that servant, it opens in their solitude. And it's required for those servants to seek their solitude and to be away from everything. And as a result Allah built closer relationship and more Divinely dress upon the reality of the servant. So we're in a way to find the peace in that solitude. You begin to get it in little drops here and there that you get it just driving because you're away from everybody's busy talking, yelling, wanting, screaming and then your, ha- your car becomes like a maqam. You play your salawats, you do your zikr, you have your time to communicate, maybe a bus, maybe a park, maybe a time in the house when everybody's asleep or everybody's going to work, going to school. Everyone's condition is different in life and those little pockets of time they become a source of energy, ecstasy, some even cry because they're able to connect and, and feel the connection within their heart in the times that Allah gives them. This is the, the, the goal so that we, we have this time that Allah wants for us to slow down and understand our life and what's transpiring because it's an immense chess game. Every move that you're making it's going to counter with another move from the other side. So everything in our life has to be calculated, has to be thought out. Every word the servant says that if I say this what will be the next two moves that happen? This is the difference between the rijal and the regular common person, house of lords and house of commons. If anyone thinks that they're all the same they're very wrong. You read Qur'an, read it in English if that's your language, read it in Urdu if that's your language. And to each everyone has a different darajat even amongst the Prophets they have different ranks, different closeness, different proximities to Allah Light is like a spectrum, like a teardrop that all these layers of lights to reach towards that center and has an eternal reality in its proximity. And those whom Allah dressing and blessing from those realities then they dress from it, they bless from it, take from it and they aspire to reach towards these realities. Now go back to the fire and what shaitan doesn't want us to reach from these realities. So within this dunya he creates the busy environment. Why shaitan wants everything to be hasty? So our life is a chess game, every th- word you say as rijan has to be thought that if I say this what is going to be the outcome to the person that I'm dealing with or to whatever is happening in my life, everything has to be calculated. Nothing can come out of the mouth without the thought process. That's why they're very calculated realities that Allah give to them, don't just speak, don't just say anything of haste is from shaitan. Anything comes out from you too fast and your actions were too fast and not checked, it's shaitan's push onto your character. So that's why their character is slow and thought, they think, they contemplate, they're asking for support in everything that they say and they do and this is so that they can take the maximum of what Allah want to inspire for them and that also to negate the effect of shaitan against them because they know that shaitan is on the other side going to manipulate and 
and do everything to make the situation difficult. This is rijal, these are the house of lords, these are the darajat of the souls that Allah is honouring, dressing and blessing. House of commons they talk very fast, they act very fast, they do everything out of haste, they do everything very quickly and shaitan is in their action. And the reason they have difficulty to sit and meditate, the reason they don't find any peace in their solace or solitude, any peace in their solitude is because of the character that if they cheat, if they lie, if they're doing bad things, all the things that shaitan inspires and son to do. Do you really think he wants you to stop and smell the roses? For at the moment you stop, your conscience will talk to you, hey what did you just do? What was that? What did you just say? What did you just… what was this action that you just did? So we get to understand the physiology of these realities. When you're moving fast and you're completely bombarded, you're, everything is in haste, he's keeping your ears busy with noises, sounds, music, all these different things, you're looking, 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 looking. So that don't stop to realize what I have really done to you, how much I'm abusing you, how much I have you doing horrific things that Allah may punish you, may distance you from His realities. And that's why these people don't want to slow down, they don't want to meditate, they don't want to contemplate. Can you imagine we know people in our lives that are, are what do they call that they… Uh, pathetic liar? No, not pathetic. Someone who lies all the time, they can't say a truth, they just lie all the time. Every word from their mouth is a lie. Huck. Are you think this person could ever sit and meditate and talk slow and contemplate? Even the illusion of talking slow is not talking slow, the mind is so active in all the lies that it's saying for if that person was to actually sit and meditate it would be devastating to them because their consciousness would begin to open, their heart would begin to come alive. The heart that doesn't slow down is dead. It's actually not alive, it's moving too fast, shaitan has covered it, blocked it, put all sorts of sins upon it, all bad actions upon it and it doesn't have any desire from shaitan to stop and now contemplate. So anyone who says, oh we don't have contemplation in Islam, Islam is the, is the, is the sultan of contemplation. Allah just say, even when you read Qur'an don't make a noise, don't listen to anything but listen to the Qur'an, it's the holy speech of Allah that is the most contemplated speech and word and reality that anyone can contemplate. It's all based on that. So it means that the goal of shaitan is to keep insan busy, humans busy, fill them with sins and bad actions. So they're so busy a hundred miles an hour into the grave and by the time they hit the grave they don't even remember and recall and that's why death is the great equalizer. Death is the big muraqabah for everybody but unfortunately that hole of death if that's where you want to do your muraqabah it's 70,000 times more difficult than on this earth because you have no way of relief and the account is finalized, you can't go back out to give charity, to, to give food, to, to make a repentance, to ask forgiveness. There's no way to, to correct the file, that's the immensity when Allah says 70,000 times even two times is, is beyond imagination. Can you imagine if Allah wants to, to increase your punishment by 70,000 times? If so many times I, I, somebody comes and I want to slap you one time but two times harder, you say, no you're going to break my jaw, how can I do like that? No, 70,000 times I'm going to do it harder. It's a number that means don't even move towards that direction, nobody survives that direction. So our whole life the shaitan is trying to distract us is don't stop. Don't contemplate, 
Don't take a life in which you're very calculated because as soon as you sit and meditate and why you're asking for the madad is that you're asking for the Divine Light because shaitan's not letting me to stop, shaitan's not letting to, me to contemplate because he's doing all these bad things through me, saying bad things through me, making me to be angry, bad character, bad mouth, bad actions. He's not going to let me sit there alone. And so, okay, you, you, you imagine there's a horrific person, horrific entity is torturing you and you say, just please sit down, I want to call 911. Leave me alone for a few minutes, I'm going to call 911 to get relief. He's not coming, he's not going to let you do that. Let's so you watch all these action movies. There's an analogy in that, no, no, no one who holds you captive is going to let you call for support and help and let you reach it yourself and say, go. So of course he says, no there's no 911 allowed here. So what do you mean, uh, I can't get help? I said, no, you just got to do it yourself, this is the Wahhabi thing. They come and say, no, because Wahhabi has with shaitan and they don't want you to think. They want you just to listen to their nonsense jargon that absolutely makes no sense at all, the Dajjal philosophy and that nothing based on love, nothing based on good actions, just, just keep listening, listen, listen, listening. No, but tariqah comes and says, no, no, sit and contemplate. Whatever the shaykh is, is teaching you, it's, a, it's an obvious reality from the oceans of love and muhabbat. And if you sit to contemplate, you're asking for support because I know the devil is going to stop me from this. I'm asking for those whom Allah has already blessed that their nazar to be with me wa kunuma sadiqeeni taqullah. Ya Rabbi I'm trying to have taqwa and your order was keep the company of pious people. I'm keeping their company more important spiritually than physically. I spiritually want to be with them, I sit and, and ask for their support that say to that when you're in my presence please bring your light and push away this shaitan so I can get to know myself, correct my character, correct my bad actions, teach me how that I can speak quietly, always talk with the best of manners for if your manners should leave. You've, you've left the ocean of iman and you entered now into the oceans of kufr. So why anger is disbelief? Why, why these are such immense oceans of reality that when you can't control your tongue and you can't control the heart and you can't control these actions means that shaitan is inside the person, on the person, on the tongue of the person, on the ear of that person and as a result they are very distant from the connection of Allah And it has the immensity of Allah describing to Prophet that qadab is kufr, it's disbelief. Because at that moment shaitan is inside the person taking everything of their iman and faith off. And that's a faithless person at that moment and anything is possible. They can say anything in that condition, they can do anything in that condition and that's the condition in which 99% of the world is harming and, and harming each other and harming other people. So the immensity of that reality is that shaitan doesn't want anyone to stop, just sit to contemplate. So if you don't have the ability to, to, to find a, a solitude and to try to reach a, a peace within your, your loneliness and you shouldn't be lonely but you should be by yourself, Lone, not in the English is not lonesome but to be by my, myself and to make my connection, train on how to make the connection, bring the energy onto my being and I understand why I'm not able to do because shaitan wants me to be busy, wants me to be distracted, wants me to have all of these different things that are distracting me so I never stop to think, what did I just say and how did I just say that and what are the actions that I'm doing? And that's why it becomes more and more difficult in the last days. Nobody gonna sit to meditate and everyone's going to tell everybody, don't sit to make tafakkur, don't sit to make meditation. If you don't how will you know what you've been doing wrong the whole day? 
How will you know what shaitan has been manipulating you for the whole day if you're not sitting and that's all that he wants is then don't. Don't sit that day, don't sit the next day, don't sit the next day after that. So it means the immensity of, of this reality and how to find and that's why it's a, it's a path by myself. It's not a path that I came to tariqah and now I want four other people to come with me and all my friends to come with me. It's contrary to what this was the reality. And when anybody wants the daleel from Qur'an it's Surat al-Yusuf the 12th surah and the discussion about the reality of Sayyidina Yusuf is the tariqah. That we don't care if your father was a prophet which there are no fathers who are prophets on this earth but Allah is describing at that time, we don't care that your father is Sayyidina Yaqub Your path is different and you'll be thrown into a well and the one whom's going to train you will come to get you. So everybody was thrown into a well, isolated from their families, isolated from their friends, isolated from relationships that they thought they knew for many years of their life. They say, I came to tariqah and all my friends left me, all the people I knew left me. Yes, because this is the, the, the understanding from Surat al-Yusuf that Allah gives. Tariqah is the twelfth and it's the completion, is the path and the dunya level is Surat al-Yusuf. The heavenly level is that 12 times 9 which is Surat al-Kawthar. If you follow this teaching and understand what Sayyidina Yusuf was teaching to be dressed by beatific lights, why Allah is describing Sayyidina Yusuf as beautiful? Not physical handsomeness but the beatific light of Sayyidina Muhammad if perfected the whole of dunya will be intoxicated by that light and that reality. If done correctly then Allah will elevate them to the 12th hijab in the way of awliyaullah and the way of marifah which is the 9 times the 12 which is the real hajj which is Surat al-Kawthar. So it means that we do Surat al-Yusuf to understand this is my path, don't matter who my father is, go into the hole. Isolate from them, Allah's coordinates for you is different than anyone else in your family. And in a hole you're alone, he wasn't thrown in with people in his hole, he was <laughs> thrown alone and he was thrown by his brothers who were prophets. So it means those whom dearest to you may stab you one day, may harm you one day may betray you one day, it doesn't matter because you're in a hole and that your path will come and the ones who come, Malik al-Aziz. These names are, these are not uh, just random names that Allah we give that in, in, in the Jummah, Malik al-Aziz. Why Malik al-Aziz Allah described as the king for Sayyidina Yusuf, this ocean of beatific grace, this ocean of beatific tariqahs and the ways and path to Allah's Divinely Kingdom. This king is Malik Aziz that Allah has authorized with complete authorization because Aziz nothing can stop it. Whatever Aziz decrees what it comes to you comes to you. What is held from you is held from you, not the whole world can stop it nor the whole world can help it because we are under Sayyidina Malik al-Aziz. This is the kingdom of tariqahs, we answer to no one from this earth. Whatever they think their authority is nothing, we're under the kingdom of Malik al-Aziz. And under Malik al-Aziz whatever he decrees for us it comes, whatever he abstains from us is held away. And this is complete Allah describes this king complete authority. Means this Muhammadan kingdom has been known by all the Prophets, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Allah made them all recite these du'as all their life. So means that this, this way is, is of course from the Qur'an, 
When they complete that understanding, took to their or understanding of meditating, contemplating, fight the bad character that your meditation is showing you. The servant, they say, what do you dress with the servant with what? Everything is about the dress of light and energy. So that's not making sense for people I don't understand. The, your soul is light and the only thing your soul wants is more light. And more light that Allah gives from oceans of power, now your soul has been elevated higher into Divine the Presence. Somebody who can touch 10 volt battery means his light is very weak. Somebody who can touch a 100 volt battery, his light is stronger. One who can touch 10,000 volt lightning, then his soul is immensely more powerful. So are we getting? The understanding that as your light is getting stronger and by virtue of Allah sending more energy and more light on it, the soul is becoming much more powerful and closer to the oceans of power and the oceans of, of immense reality. And that's our only life's purpose is to this time that Allah sent upon this earth, go achieve that light. As a result of moving closer to that energy and to which you're almost holding that electricity that coming to all of the created universes, that energy is the source of knowledges, that energy is the source of barakah, that energy is the source of everything that manifests on pious people. Their knowledge is not because they're red, the knowledge is because their soul is in that ocean of lightning. And the closer it is into the center of that lightning means it's in the virtual beat of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad then that's the depth of the uloom that comes from that soul as it manifests all the way upon this earth. So our whole life is to achieve those lights. So then to practice this solitude in which I want to be by myself and I'm going to control my character, control my bad desires, control my temper, control all of these things and sit, sit at the end of the night to contemplate. When I'm sitting in the car play my salawats and connect and, and ask my Lord, what have I done wrong? Why am I distant from everything and make a hisab and accounting for oneself. Use every moment of being away from people to make your connection with your Lord and every time you become angered or exhibit any bad character, quickly go into your meditation. Don't let shaitan to distract you, keep you to be busy so that you never think about, what did you just say? How did you just say that? This was not the, the character of the house of lords and lordly souls and that you're trying to exhibit of a lofty nature, higher nature. So these are all the ways towards this ocean of marifa. And that's why people whom are busy with their bad characters, lying, cheating, all these things, of course they're not going to sit to contemplate. They keep themselves so busy that they can't even be alone, they have to always have someone as a companion, they have to… They can, there are people who can never spend a moment alone, why? Shaitan doesn't want them to be alone, to listen. Because if you're alone you can listen, Allah will inspire your soul that, what did you just say? How did you do that? When shaitan overrides the servant, never to be alone, never to listen, keep busy, run here, do that, do this, do this until they just pass out from busyness and go to sleep. Never a moment to sit, to contemplate, just to, to think, to, to go for a walk and contemplate what are they doing, why are they lying, why are they doing these types of characteristics. So this is the, the immensity of that reality when they say, oh don't have bad ego, that doesn't mean anything. But when the knowledges want to teach you how your ego and shaitan are playing and why is it important to do these contemplations. Why is it to achieve these energies and these lights? Because every time you achieve a good character and everything is coming from Allah every, every event in our life and every breath that comes to us is from Allah He wants to reward the servant with good character. Allah doesn't care for a single relationship, doesn't care for your spouse, doesn't care for the children, doesn't care for anything, just cares for your character. 
Because Allah will deal with each of these creations, each have their own grave. That is important reality in our marifah. Allah not looking to a collective package, Allah is looking only to you. So, oh, you whatever you fight about relationships, fight about this, fight about that. That's not the cause in which Allah is concerned, Allah said, these are relationships are based on dunya. All that I care about is, what is your soul doing? Are you achieving what you have to achieve with good character? Is your soul achieving these realities where Allah's rida addresses it and then now blesses it? Allah finds satisfaction within their souls, that's why the shaykh's lives they're like a, on a roller coaster car completely spinning out of control and all over the place but they're always solid and firm in their belief. And as a result Allah continuously dressing their souls because it's not about dunya, it's about what Allah want to dress their soul with blessings and lights and, and realities inshaAllah. That's why we watch all these fantasy movies, watch many tariqah people love all of these realities because their soul knows it to be true, knows that these lights are true, these energies are true, these, these gifts and these abilities that Allah want to dress upon the soul are true. But shaitan distracts and son and people don't achieve any of those, you don't need any of those. But you see the whole world is in destruction and the only thing you do need are those realities. Nothing from this dunya is going to save you if a sickness and, and a virus comes to your door. Not the money in the world will help anybody, not anything they achieve from their dunya will help anybody. But what Allah has inspired within your soul of your abilities and your reality is everything. So we pray that Allah open, open these realities of finding time for ourselves and, and recognizing the characteristics that are favourable to Allah and that the bad characteristics which are not favourable to Allah and why shaitan is encouraging those things to stop us from meditating, stop us from contemplating, stop us from connecting and asking the shaykhs to be with us, their nazar to be with us. Why shaitan is against that? That's obvious and don't who you meet and says, oh no, no this is, oh this is not. Yeah that's because the shaitan agents they, they're all working together, they don't want it to happen. They don't want you to be empowered and they don't want souls to reach to their light and to their reality. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha, alhamdulillah.